Okay, so welcome to the Cerner documentation portion of this orientation. Um, so this is a test patient. This is what the home page will look like for you. Um, our, our current goal on the psychiatry service is to have everybody, attendings, residents, and students, documenting through the workflow M page. Um, I don't. I haven't really worked with other services recently, so I'm not sure if this is something you guys learn or how common it is. But if you know it, you can skip it. But this is what we're encouraging you guys to do. More than encouraging, this is what we want you to do. Um, so the workflow M page is where you can fill in all aspects of your note before creating your note. Um, so I will say. I don't, I have okay templates. I'm just going to cover the auto text sharing now. Um, you can talk to your resident, but if you start the rotation and you need a template for the mental status exam, you can type in my last name, Posada, P-O-S-A-D-A, -A, um, Posada Jacqueline, and I have some, I have some reasonable um, templates, but definitely the mental status exam. Um, so the you will probably primarily be working in the Manage tab, and the man Manage tab is where progress notes are written. So starting with the subjective portion, this is where you would write your subjective, where you, after you review the nursing notes and the MAR, and you've talked to the patient, I'm just going to paste in some information that I've already written. Um, so you can see here, um, as we discussed in the on the orientation, I reviewed the nursing notes, which kind of let us know what happened with the patient and her boyfriend, and she was given a PRN, and then talking about some of the target symptoms, the patient, her mood is terrible, she's suicidal, why is she upset, what are some of her stressors, she's angry at herself for not being able to use coping skills, so I've asked her about what she wants from this hospitalization, and her goal is not to let her emotions get the better of her. And we kind of talked about goals and what she can do. And then we talked about her side effects. So she took her first dose of an SSRI and denied specific um, specific side effects. So the, the subjective is pretty good about saving automatically. The objective portion where you're going to put in your mental status exam is not very good at auto-saving. So once you've entered your mental status exam, using a, a template um, and again mine is pretty basic I fill mine out with a lot of detail that's what I'm hoping that you'll learn to be doing over the rotation um, but make sure that you save it and then moving to the assessment and plan so I would say it is the attendings who usually add the diagnoses the residents we, we want them to um, especially on the initial evaluation, but basically as an attending, we need to have specific diagnoses in the chart in order to bill. So you may, may see no diagnoses one day and then a bunch of diagnoses the next day, and it's usually because the attending has billed. So let me just get my assessment for this patient so we can talk about assessments. All right, so I'm going to paste my assessment here. And what's helpful about the workflow page in Cerner is that whatever you write into the assessment, and as we add diagnoses, I'll show you, um, this information is going to remain there day to day. So Cerner, unlike other EMRs, doesn't have a, a great copy forward um, function, for better or for worse. You know, there's a lot of issues with copying, pasting. Um, but the best and a more effective way or efficient way to write the note is if you're the person writing a note on the patient every day, uh, which is very likely if you're going to be the student writing the note, your information in this assessment and plan area is going to carry forward every day. So you don't have to copy and paste the plan. Um, you can just update the plan that you've already written. It doesn't really copy forward for other people, so they may copy in your information, but if you're you know, writing consistent notes, it makes your life easier. The subjective is not going to copy forward, so you'll get to write a new subjective. And the same thing for the mental status exam. Um, that does not copy forward the next day. So in the assessment and plan, um, so you know, I would say don't be afraid to add diagnoses as a student. Um, 
especially if you don't see any there, uh, or if you think that maybe somebody like the attending or the resident has missed one, because um, also it's pretty simple for the attending to remove diagnoses that they think are incorrect. So I'm just going to show you how to add in the diagnoses. So you just go to this magnifying glass and say the Cerner function is pretty smart. So you can see I typed in PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and then it auto-populates down here. Um, generalized anxiety disorder. Um, these can be changed in another area. The diagnoses, you don't need to worry about that as a student. Just choose the one that you think is most accurate. And you can see they all have the same F codes. Don't forget about the substance use disorder. Um, so I would say Cerner is pretty lacking in having very specific or useful substance use disorder codes. So I'll usually clarify um, in the assessment, but I try to choose the closest one. So, um, and I try to use the one, I try to use the substance use disorder with the correct modifier. So at least that shows up. So I, if I think it's um, moderate, even though dependence is not in the DSM anymore, I just choose cannabis use disorder moderate um, with dependence. So my, my diagnosis with the severity of the illness is present. Um, and then alcohol. Okay, so as you can see here, I just typed in the diagnoses. They populated here. Um, also, please include the medical diagnoses. So this patient has a history of fibromyalgia. Um, so let me just show you some examples of some plans. Um, so for the PTSD and the assessment plan, I've suggested using an SNRI. So we're going to start Deloxetine, 20 milligrams. Um, and this information that is typed here in the PTSD, let's say the next day you want to titrate up to 40 milligrams per day, the start deloxetine will be there so you can just edit that sentence. You don't have to write a new sentence. Um, the important thing is that these diagnoses will only show up in the note if you write something in the box. So let's say that, you know, you know mentally or intellectually that the duloxetine is also going to treat the generalized anxiety disorder. Well, if you don't write anything under generalized anxiety disorder, it won't show up um, in the completed note. So I would just say like SNRI to target PTSD and GAD. Um, and then I'll put the same thing to SNRI to target, you know, her centralized pain syndrome. Um, so you kind of get the point, you have to write something here. So there's no official treatment for cannabis use disorder. So motivational interviewing. And I mean, I don't just put it, I also do motivational interviewing. Um, but the important thing is that you need something in each box. And so when a patient is on specific medications like antipsychotics, you will see other boxes here like um, metabolic syndrome monitoring or nicotine replacement or discharge planning. Um, you can click on those and they're going to offer you options to resolve them and then they'll show up in your note. Okay, so we have all of our specific um, diagnoses here. We have an assessment. So I wrote the long one that we're not going to really go over, but the important thing is that I I wrote an assessment where I, I talk about why she came to the hospital, why she was admitted, covered some biopsychosocial um, background in these last sentences, and then as I've been seeing the patient, I'm updating it. So I'm saying my diagnosis is PTSD and it's high because if she meets criteria for borderline personality disorder, I haven't included it yet because I want to clarify, but you can always add a provisional diagnosis. And then in the box, you can write that this is a provisional diagnosis. And that will let 
you know, all the teams or you're attending or people who read this note in the future know that you were thinking about this diagnosis. Um, and then I also talk a bit about her, the treatment and why we're using an SNRI because it's good for PTSD and fibromyalgia and certain therapies. So again, this is something that I'll be able to just copy into the discharge summary and my, my hospital course will pretty much be done. All right, so let's create the note. Um, so I will go over the, the requirements that should be in the note, um, the templates, but as you can see here, we have the subjective. I'm going to show you how to make sure that allergies and vitals are in the note, which they're not here. So actually let's cancel this note. Um, so what you want to do is go to your workflow page and then go to progress note settings and we're going to update the progress note setting. So making sure that vital signs are clicked, um, you know, that's all we need for psychiatry. You can put the allergies. I don't usually include all these other histories because they're usually not accurate because they're completed by the ER staff who's not getting the same social history as we are. I usually just include the inpatient medications. So, you know, we know what they're taking here unless the medication records, the Medication reconciliation is done correctly. The home meds are not particularly useful to you. Um, and then making sure that recent labs are checked. And then save the progress note settings. And we'll go back to create our note. Oh, I see, there's no vital signs because there's no vital signs entered by nurses for this test patient. But basically, the vital signs will be here under the objective as long as your progress note settings are correct. You see the physical exam, the results that will show up. And then if you enter the diagnoses under the workflow page, as I've shown you, all of your diagnoses are going to auto-populate here with the F code. So then you don't have to type in diagnoses. And then the plan, all of the specific treatment will be under the correct diagnosis. So that's why we're encouraging you to use workflow page because it makes the note more organized. It links the treatment to the diagnosis, which is good for patient care. I would also say it's good for billing. Um, and it's also going to make your life easier because if you're writing the note for the patient every day, your information is going to be there. So then, you know, I'll sign submit my note and you're going to try if you're if it's possible for you make sure that it is saved as a BH progress note um, because we have a special area in Cerner so most students end up saving theirs as progress note but try to make it a BH progress note um, and then you'll assign it to the attending or the resident and then you'll sign it so Thank you for your attention. I know this has been long. You can skip around um, on this orientation as you see fit, um, and we'll try to put the timestamps into the information on the YouTube page.